in today's video, not only are we going to be doing a bit of golf tech review, we're going to be giving you some golf tips and tricks to hopefully help you lower your scores if you're trying to break 80, trying to break 90, trying to break 100. Hopefully this bit of information will help you do that this season or maybe even break 70 in golf. Let's hope some of you are doing that. To top it off, included in that, we're going to be answering someone's question that I got sent to me through Instagram. And the bit of equipment that we're reviewing is this, the new ShotScope Pro L2 rangefinder. A rangefinder is something that I've used for absolutely donkey's years since being an amateur golfer. And I think they're great and the technology's come on load since the first ones were ever released. I also use a golf GPS watch. And some of you down that lens must think, well, why have both? Well, we'll talk about that in this video. But first up, let's talk to you about the technology in this ShotScope Pro L2 rangefinder. First up, it's tournament legal. So if you're an amateur playing in competitions at the weekend, playing in national, regional competitions, you can use this in tournament. Basically because of this little switch here, which we'll come to. It's powered by battery, which is replaceable. It's accurate to within one yard. And I'm reading that it's got a range of 700 yards. Uh, 700 yards accurate to within a yard. Sounds pretty good. Six times zoom magnification. And the last two bits of technology in this, I think are super important. First up is the slope technology, which is what this little button on the side is here. So if you switch it away towards the lens, you've got a little green bit in here, which tells you that your slope reading is on. So as you zap, if you're on an uphill or downhill, it's gonna tell you the yardage, and then it's gonna tell you the adjusted yardage. So if you're downhill, it might say 150, and then it will tell you what yardage it's actually playing. So 150 might be 145, for instance, and then it does it the opposite way as well. So uphill, it will tell you 150 is playing 155. But then if you turn it off, that's where it becomes tournament friendly. So if you've turned it off, you will now not get a slope reading, which now means it's conforming in tournaments because you're not allowed slope in tournaments. And the final bit of tech is the target vibration that you get. So once you hit the flag and that target lock vibration, it's hitting the closest thing to you when you're looking through your rangefinder. So if there's trees and things behind the pin, I tend to aim to the left or right of the pin and then bring it across and once it hits that flag it'll go and vibrate and now you know you're locked onto the flag so you're not going to get any misreads on your yardages. Now you can get other range finders that also have GPS attached to them. ShotScope do one, I think it's called the Pro LX Plus, but for a range finder on its own, that's pretty much all the tech you can get in these sorts of things. Hold that thought, it's got a built-in buggy magnet. So yeah, I think it's got pretty much everything that you can get in a range finder. And I don't often talk about price in videos because like it's down to you how much you want to spend on things. But I had a little look online against like other range finders and other brands. And this seemed ridiculously cheap. It's 150 pounds. 150 pounds for an absolute game changing bit of tech that's going to give you accurate yardages and potentially lower your scores. I think that's pretty good. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Let's play a few holes with the Pro L2 then and talk you through how I use a rangefinder and some tips and tricks that could potentially help you lower your scores. And let's go through that message that I got on my DMs from someone. And if you've got any questions that you wanna ask me, make sure you hit me up on socials. I might reply with a video or reply on socials. So if you do have any golf questions, make sure you're asking away. And the message is from Zach. And the message said, had an idea for a video. Are rangefinders losing you shots? I might even title the video that. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> I.e., are you picking the wrong target or yardage because you're shooting the pin? If the pin is tucked, is the number leading you to problems? I play with guys who use the number on the flag and pick club off that and go for every flag. I personally feel like I play better with GPS and picking front, middle and back and avoiding pin hunting. Interesting. 
in the comments down below. What do you use? Do you use a GPS? Do you use a rangefinder? Do you use both? And what are you doing when you're using them? Are you zapping the pin and using that yardage? Or are you taking other things into account? Let's play some holes and let's chat about it. Like I said at the start of the video, I've used a rangefinder for absolutely donkey's years. And I feel like having the slope system on here has just made me loads better at judging slope and what effect it will have on that yardage. So when you do have to turn these off in competitions, I feel personally, this sort of technology has taught me more about slope and changing those yardages to help my clubbing and maybe stop myself hitting it into dodgy spots that I don't want to. When I'm using my zapper as well, I'm not only just zapping the flag, which is what the message is talking about. I'm zapping the edge of bunkers at the, like for instance here, there's some sleepers on the lake. It's 150 to the sleepers. It's 165 to carry the bunker. It's 182 to the flag. These are all without slope yardages. So with these, try and gauge as much information as you can out on the course to keep yourself away from danger. Help yourself with certain clubbing. It's hard to get like front, middle and back on the yardages with these things because greens are pretty much flat. You'll be hitting an upslope on one. Downhill's a bit easier, but still, it's not gonna be as accurate as maybe what a GPS is. But Try and get as much information as you can as possible to help you with your clubbing, avoiding danger, hitting into certain areas that will help you get up and down easier. And I think Zach's question has got good merit to it because definitely when I got a rangefinder, I 100% just zapped at the flag. I was super, super aggressive. But since having my watch where I use this more, 178 middle, I think 195 back, I think 165 front. Again, that's not taken into consideration any slope, but I'm looking at these yardage as like my goal that I need to hit into. Yes, I can see that the flag's right in the middle on this green, luckily, but if it was front right, for instance, I would still be looking at all three of those yardages. A rangefinder, I'm not so sure I would of when I first got one. So if you are thinking about buying a rangefinder, try and take into consideration as much as possible. Zap as much information as possible. Don't stand there for five minutes zapping every blade of grass. Like you don't need to do that, but like the hazards, bunkers, where the front and back of the green is if you can, but it's gonna be hard to. Sleepers like on this, lake hole for instance gather as much information as you can Let's talk about tee shots. This is a 385 yard par four over a hill. And I have literally no idea if there's bunkers down there, any hazards down there, ditches to be worried about. Um, all I can see is a tree on the left. So I'll zap that. That is 215 playing, 208, 215 slope as we're hitting uphill and then down. And that's all I can really zap. So this is one of the sort of cons of a rangefinder. If this was a new course to me, I'd have no idea what's over there. I would have had to have done some research to find out. Whereas my watch, I can literally just scroll through. I can swipe it to the side and luckily for this one, there is no hazard. So it's pretty much a straight par four over the hill. And for the type of golf that I play these days, I'm playing courses that I haven't played before. So I like to have as much information as possible about a hole, which is what the GPS is basically gonna give me. So when you want to learn more about the whole hole, tee shots, blind tee shots, that's where a GPS can really come into its own and a rangefinder can only give you a limited amount of information. Don't get me wrong, we would go on another par four on this course or a par five and it would be slightly downhill and I would be able to see all the trouble, all the bunkers and I would be able to zap them. But if you are thinking about purchasing one of these, think about the course that you play at. I know, for instance, if you played at Perrenporth in Cornwall in England, that's got so many blind shots. I would 100% be going for one of these 
or a combo. So don't only think about you as a golfer, think about the course that you're playing at or if you're mixing up the courses that you play at too. Short shots, pitching up to like 150 is where I really see my shot scope excelling. This is where I want a precise yardage. This is 100 yards playing 89. As this is downhill, I can also zap the front of the green, 72 playing 61. I can also zap the back, 109 playing 96. Whereas with a GPS, I can't get that exact yardage of the flag. Yes, I can have a guess, but I want to be as accurate as possible when I get to this sort of position. But going back to Zach's point in his message again, yes, I'm zapping the flag and probably going to take this yardage as an exact measurement but I'm also being well aware of where all the danger is. And on this shot, it's long. And I know because I can zap that back yardage with my rangefinder, I know that this can't go over 108 yards without the slope, I think it was. So yes, Zach, I do think there are 100% golfers only using rangefinders and zapping the flag and using that as their yardage and just hitting straight at the pin. Because that's what it promotes you to do, whereas a GPS watch tells you front, middle and back. It gives you a big target area to hit at. It takes your sort of focus away from your target and the flag. I've definitely seen a difference in my game since using a watch and being less aggressive, taking my focus away from that pin, thinking about danger more. If you're serious about golf and you can afford it, I would 100% say get both GPS and a rangefinder. If you're playing lots of different courses, I would probably say urge towards a GPS. If you're playing the same course over and over and over and you know where all the dangers are, all the hazards are, for example, then maybe I'd go towards more of a rangefinder. But again, it's total personal preference. You can get a combo that has GPS and a rangefinder in. So there's a win for everyone in there. But from Zach's message, I definitely think people can use these devices better to help their game. And hopefully this has highlighted some of those aspects on still trying not to flag hunt on everything. Trying to find the middle of the greens more often. Middle of the green, putt for birdie. Some people will say that's rubbish because you're not two foot away, but don't look at the stats if you're that person because you'll probably be wrong. <laughs> Hope this video has helped. Well, a little review, answering a question and giving you some tips on maybe how to improve your golf by using these sorts of technologies. I hope that helps. If you are in the market to purchase one as well, have a think which one's going to be better for your game. Don't just get one because your mates have got it, etc., etc. Think about you, think about the courses that you play at and which will work better for you. Hope that helps. Thanks all for watching. If you are enjoying the channel and the videos, make sure you're subscribed to the channel, hitting that like button and turn that bell notification on so you get notified of when I upload all my new videos. Thanks all for watching. See you in the next one.